Hello, welcome to the Battle and Barrow and another terrain guide. Uh, this one is continuing my recent sort of magnetic dungeon tile system. And for this, I want to craft some uh, sort of tavern type walls. Now, they say that you shouldn't really build uh, terrain for a tavern encounter, but I always say, who are they to tell me what to do? I actually like uh, doing stuff like that. Uh, encounters in taverns um, plus sometimes there is legit reasons for it so um, the fourth edition keep on the shadow fill I want to convert over to fifth edition um, Dungeons and Dragons uh, and they, they already covered that in Dungeon Magazine uh, and they also added a an encounter to it and that first encounter is an actual tavern encounter where they had a tavern battle map I want to make that 3D um, using my tavern system. So that's what this is going to be. You can see this is what's going to be here. You're going to have the walls like this. And also we're going to make some uh, window pieces. Also going to make different sort of size pieces similar to the dungeon. So you can not only set up taverns, you can set up country manors, houses, buildings, anything really. Just anything with that kind of medieval wall look. So let's get making these this tavern piece type thing wall look so let's get making these this tavern piece type thing this project's actually really good for uh, using scraps here's some old bits of books wood I'm gonna use it's 10 mil thick but I'm gonna just pull it apart and strip this down um, of course possibly best to buy brand new if you want but I'm just because I had loads of this laying around, I'm just going to strip it down into 10mm by 10mm strips, which is the thickness of the balsa wood. Now, with um, the uh, balsa wood strips, I'm just going to work out how long they need to be. Um, now I'm going to cut this with a miter saw. Uh, they are going to be the same width as the old walls. That we did for the uh, dungeons which is five and a quarter inches so I'm just going to use the mitre saw to get a nice straight cut I'm going to work out how high I want the walls uh, the old dungeon ones were an inch and a half high so I'm just going to uh, cut a bit work out how long I want the end post to be um, strip we just cut will sit on top of the wall and the end post will either go like so where it's right at the end but I'm thinking it really needs to be the other way around so this bit needs to be over the top of the end piece but whilst I've got this set up like this I can measure how much I'm going to need to cut how, how big the foam core is going to be that I'm going to need to cut and that is just under five uh, inches, or in metric, that'll be 12 and a half centimeters. I'm gonna cut the actual main bit of wall out of foam core. We don't have a dollar store foam core in this country, so I have to pay a fair premium for it. This is from Hobbycraft. So I'm just gonna measure out strips of foam core. I'm gonna work out and cut out plenty, because I'm gonna make four normal walls and four windowed walls once I've got the uh, widths uh, lengths um, worked out I'm going to work out the widths and now just carefully cut it with a sharp fresh blade now I've got that done I'm going to go back to the mitre saw and cut out the, um, the, the lengths of the post which are the same height as the um, walls, which is an inch and a half. Using a set square, just so I get a nice right angle, I'm gonna glue the two pieces together. So the long bit here goes over the top of the end post. And now when they're dry, I can actually apply some glue to the foam core and glue that into place, into the middle. Uh, probably been easier if I'd have done this before I glued it, but I'm just going to cut out slight bits from the uh, balsa wood just to give it a bit of wear and tear so it's not all perfectly straight. 
Then even though it's balsa wood and it's got its own grain, I'm going to come in with a sculpting tool and add some deeper wood grain effect just to make it really pop. And now I'm going to work out the how I want the detail to be. You can see from this picture here from a pub in England, it's this one I'm going to use to mimic. So it's going to be a central beam going across and then some vertical beams. So these are made from coffee stirrers. I'm just measuring and cutting sides with scissors. Uh, one thing I do want to make sure of is when I glue them into place that they all line up. So I'm using the previous one that I've glued in to line up with the next one I'm gluing in. I want to get let that dry before I come in and work out the vertical beams, which are done in much the same way. Put in place, marked up and cut. And then I'm just going to glue those into place. I'm going to do a complete vertical strip first just to, so I know where it is so on the other side I can use that to line up the uh, beams so they look correct as you can see here and then when I'm going to come in with some Mod Podge and an old paintbrush and in the uh, foam core I'm just going to add a sort of splodgy mess if you like of Mod Podge here because this will be the um, actors did plaster on the walls here I'm going to work out the windows um, what I'm going to do is find the central point of the uh, piece taking into account that it's going to be look like one side's going to be less than the other because of the end post. I've got to take that into account when marking out the line. Then I'm just going to draw a freehand window here. And what I want it to look like is this picture here in a pub in time. That's what I'm aiming for. Uh, once I've freehanded that, I can tidy that up with a ruler and cut it out. And I'll keep it to one side for use later on. And now I'm going to use some coffee stirrers because I want to clad the inside of that window to get rid of that foam core look and so it would be wood on the inside. So I'm just going to mark up and cut uh, some coffee stirrers. Two long bits for the top and two short bits for the sides. and I will cut and glue those into place. One thing to note is the coffee stirrers are slightly wider than the foam core which is okay because that will act as a window seal for the inside of the window then I'm going to do the outside window frame and going back to the trusty miter saw I'm going to work out a nice 45 degree angle cut so when two bits go uh, butt up against each other, they are nice and flush and look really good. I shall then place this onto the window to mark out the where I need to make the next angle cut. So I'll put a mark at the end of the window and take that piece back to the mitre saw so I can cut that out. This is a little mini mitre saw and it's been a godsend for projects like this. And it's made making these windows really easy. Once I've got the uh, long bit done, I can do the short bit and work out, uh, cut out all four bits of the window frame. I've also put two vertical uh, bits of beaming in onto the window piece and I will glue those into place but I won't glue the window frame in just yet. Uh, for these windows, I'm going to add in some sort of uh, angled cross beams and that's just putting it into place, working out where I've got to cut it. 
and then cutting it with a pair of scissors. Just to add a bit of extra detail to the uh, walls. It's then adding in the Mod Podge into the foam core bits in between and the window. Uh, on one side you can do it all over. On the outside where we're going to add the frame, don't paint around to close to the window. So you can see I'm sort of trying to leave a bit of a gap there. And that's what it looks like when the Mod Podge dries. And you can see here, hopefully you can see the shine there where I've left a little gap around the window where I will glue the window frame in. We're now going to paint it. I'm going to undercoat everything in this burnt umber, including the window frames that I haven't yet glued on yet. Once that's dry, I'm going to come in with a tan color. Uh, this is called Coastline, and I am going to paint the plaster areas. This will take about two coats uh, to get a nice coverage. So I'll do one coat and then I'll go back over and do a second coat. Once that's done, I'm gonna come in with a lighter tan and just paint splodges into the middle area. It's just stippling. And then I'm gonna come in with a homemade wash. This is uh, water a little bit of black ink, a bit of brown paint, a bit of green paint, and one drop or two drops of washing up liquid. Now, I don't often use washes, but I'm starting to use them more in my train pieces. And I also went back and washed this over all the previous sort of dungeon tiles I've done. Um, I won't do a video on making a wash. There's so many videos out there. Just follow those. Black Magic Crafts got a few good ones. Uh, this is what it looks like when it's all dry, the paint, and now I'm going to construct the windows and I'll be able to glue them in. Uh, so for this, I'm just working out what size uh, they are. This will depend on your build, but if you're interested, it's like two inches by an inch and an eighth. I'm gonna use overhead uh, projector this is a or printable overhead projector or acetate as it's called I'm gonna mark out that measurement onto it and cut that out this will act as the window glass then I'm going to use this is a um, car repair body mesh and I'm going to cut out the same size on this and then I'm going to glue the acetate onto the wall piece and then going to glue the body mesh onto that. I should point out I painted the body mesh black. And then I'm going to glue the window frame onto the body mesh. This can be a bit tricky as glue uh, gets on your fingers and sticks to you. Uh, and a bit stick to you rather than where you want it to. Um, here I'm stripping down a um, coffee stirrer down the middle and I'm going to use some matches as well. These will be the central uh, window pane bit of wood. Uh, it's best to use used matches just for safety. Um, and these will be cut so it's the same length as the inside bit of window. So in this case it is um, about an inch and a uh, just I'm going to do it in metric, it's about a centimetre and a half, so I'm just cutting these down after painting them the same colour as the windows. Uh, the coffee stirrers will go at the front of the window and the matchsticks being they're more uh, square will go on the inside of the window. And these will uh, define the window panes. Now it's onto the floor of the tavern. The nice thing about this magnetic sheet is you've got another side to work with, so you don't need to buy another one. So I'm just going to use some printer cards here. There's some quite thick cardstocks, the same as what I used to do the actual uh, flagstones on the other side. And I'm just going to work out, I'm going to need two bits and then cut one bit down to get the correct size. And then I'm just going to come in with a sculpt or a black biro pen here. 
I'm going to draw in some planks. These are about a quarter of an inch wide. I've already marked out a quarter of an inch marks on the paper and I'm just going to come in and heavily press down with the biro. When that's done, I'm going to come in and put in uh, little plank markings on using the same biro and then coming with a sculpting tool and uh, score some uh, plank effects in and then put two holes at the end of each bit of the plank to act as nail holes and then I'm going to come in with some watered down burnt umber and what will happen is the black biro will show through uh, to really define that plank uh, effect Once that's dry, I'm going to come in and dry brush over that with some Dryad, Dryad Bark by Games Workshop. I love this for sort of giving a warm wood effect on it. It just looks like the wood has been worn and weathered. It's a really nice colour. And over the top of that, just some Steel Legion Drab, just to pick out that uh, wood grain effect that was uh, scored in. Got a nice dry brush of that over it all. And then when that's done, it's just a case of applying some glue all over the metal sheet and gluing in the planking sheets we've just done and cutting it down to size. One thing to uh, realise with paper, even the cardstock and PVA glue, is it can tend to bubble and peel up and curl up. So as I'm going along, I'm just putting anything at hand that I've got, including my phone, just to weigh it down and hold it in place and prevent that. I possibly should have used some spray adhesive, which I normally do for such things, as it that tends to uh, prevent that from happening. And now I've got one piece in, I can put the other piece in too and line it up. Also, I have made some same sort of size pieces as the standard dungeon terrain. So you've got some that are one square long, two square long, three square long. Because then I could be able to set up different rooms, not just a square tavern. Maybe some bedrooms if they go upstairs. And now, using the power of magnets, I can quickly set up a tavern uh, scene. See here, put, make sure the windows go at the front and the front of the sides, because uh, that's where the windows would be. For me, for my tavern, the back is going to be dark and dingy and secluded. Also, you'll notice I may, haven't made doors. I'm just going to use the doors from the dungeon because they will work out quite nicely if I can get get it all in place <laughs> so yeah I can just put a door in here boom and it fits it works rather well having a uh, stone door frame might come back at some point and make some wooden doors I do have some plans for some dungeon doors for the future it's very empty uh, but we can fill that with different pieces. Um, I'm not going to make any bits here. I've got it's probably better to do what I've got doing here and buy some resin pieces. Here's a resin fireplace, uh, some resin tables, and a bench, and so forth. These are available all over the internet uh, and would just be much better than what I could make. different companies sell these I'm not gonna put it. I've had these for so long I won't even know where I've got them now I also got some uh, sort of tavern drinkers uh, models that I can put in uh, just to give it a bit of atmosphere have some drinkers in here uh, what I haven't done here is I've mag magnetized some of these so they stick the models actually really easy stick to the uh, to the floor uh, just some, with some magnetic sheeting uh, but what I do want to make for this project is just one thing I do want to make is the actual bar 
So you notice once I've set this up, what is missing is the bar and the barrels of beer itself. So yeah, I'm not the barman, no bar. So I'm going to make a bar. So normally I'd use Hugo for this, but being as we are making a bar, we might as well make the landlord of this establishment because I want to see his tankard that he's holding and cleaning over the bar. So I'm just going to use a ruler and just sort of roughly work out how big it's going to be and it will be just under an inch. I'm going to use a sheet of 6mm XPS foam and I'm just going to work out how wide I want it. So here I'm just going to make it 4 inches. It can be any length you want. Uh, but ideally I want it to be thicker. I don't have any thicker foam so I'm just going to cut two bits out and stick them together for the thickness. And I'm just doubly making sure that the height of the bar is how much I want it. So I really want to see that tankard being cleaned over the top of the bar. I'm also going to make a shorter bit which is two inches for, so I could use that either as to put next to the bar to lengthen the length of the bar or I can turn it around and have it as a side return. Just glue them all together now and allow those to dry. And once it has, I'm gonna come in and work out a sort of bar pattern and lightly score that in with a pencil before coming in with a ballpoint pen and making that deeper. Uh, just making some sort of bar panel. And I'll do this on both pieces. It doesn't have to be anything intricate. I'm just doing little rectangles here. And I'm going to use a wire brush just to get a nice wood grain texture into it. The top of the bar I'm making out of chipboard, one mil chipboard, and I want one side, the uh, back of it, to be stick out more than the front. So just working out how wide I've got to cut that. Once I've cut it, I'm just going to come in with a sculpting tool and do my usual wood grain scoring onto it. And I'm going to glue it to the top of the bar. So yeah, the front of the bar it isn't, doesn't have as much as an overhang as the back. Yes, I'm going to paint in Doom Bar Brown. Is it Doom Bar or Doom Bell? Doom Bar? Anyway, it's sort of a reddish brown colour. Doom ball. Totally wrong on both counts. Doom ball brown. And then I'm going to go over with Morphang brown. Uh, I, I, I do apologise when I talk about Games Workshop paints. I still remember the old names more than the new ones. So my brain goes blank and I just want to say like in this case bestial brown I was going to say it. But ho-hum. Once that's done, just give it a good wash of Agrax Earthshade just to really bring out all that scoring and wood grain texture effect. And this is what it looks like when it's finished. It's going to magnetise the bottom of it using this magnetic sheeting material that we used in the cavern. Uh, build. Just gonna put the uh, bar on the top. Make sure the magnetic sides underneath, um, facing downwards. Draw around it. Cut that out and glue it on. Again, making sure the magnetic side, which is the shinier side, is facing down. And that is the uh, bar complete. But what would a bar be without it serving any beer? So, 
going to make some beer, I say make, I'm going to make a beer rack holder because I'm going to use some pre-made barrels which could even just stand up like this but really I like a rack system being a real ale drinker and you drink in micro pubs most of the time the beer is in a rack that will tilt as it gets emptier to allow the beer to come out so I'm going to make a, a rack I'm going to make this out of chipboard and I'm going to put the barrel in and draw around the, uh, the curve of it uh, and I'm going to cut that out and the front of it should be lower than the back so it won't be as high at the front so it will tilt so I'm just going to still make sure that's all working okay and then because I want the front lower just trim a bit off the bottom so yeah once the back's in it will tilt I'm just going to glue this onto a base which is the same width as the uh, bar I'm just going to use super glue here just to speed up the process so the back will be glued on towards the back obviously and the front at the front because that's helpful advice When they're uh, dried, I painted them all in a very dark brown so they can be placed in the bar, which I won't glue them into place. I'll just leave them into there so I can remove them, add them, do what I want with them. Yeah, there is two barrels of beer to be consumed by the patrons of the bar. And that is it complete. Before we get on to the glamour shots, I'd like to say thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, like it, uh, leave a comment. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do for more great videos that are going to come up. Uh, for now, let's have a look at the glamour shots.